Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are here live at the Luminar booth at CES 2023. The 6.5 is on the road. We are live, and it's great to be here. Daniel, how are you, my friend? Man, this is a lot better than a year ago. I love what we're seeing here at CES 2023. Very excited. The automotive spot, by the way, near and dear to my heart. And we've got some great guests here that we're going to be talking to right here in the Luminar booth, which, by the way, is having a great show already. Yeah, exactly. And I have to tell you, I've been to all the halls so far in the West Hall. It dominates. I mean, you come in here and like you said, we were here last year uh, and there were some empty spaces in the booth. I see no empty spaces in the booths. They took me 35 minutes to get here. I think we are back. But hey, let's dive in and introduce our guest. Dennis, how are you? Hey, and thank you for uh, for having me here. I'm super apart from my voice. I've been talking too much and the air conditioning is terrible. Uh, but fantastic to be here back in at CS. And as you say, CS becomes the new auto show. That is also quite clear. So I think that is very dominant, also sitting next to the cars here. Yeah, it is incredible. Uh, the amount of intelligence plus style, automation, all these amazing things come together. Oh, by the way, electrification uh, as well. I mean, let me throw that in, in there uh, as an adder. I mean, as tech analysts 10 years ago, we didn't even cover the automotive space, but but we are now because it's just so exciting and transformative. So maybe a good place to start. I know you're a rock star in the in the auto industry. Uh, we have a pretty wide audience. Tell us what you do for Polestar. Yeah, so we at Polestar here, we're the, um, the second pure play EV uh, globally. That's what we would like to see. So we are totally focused on electric cars. And uh, we spun off from Volvo cars in the beginning, and now we're an independent company. We are launching uh, one car every year now moving forward. Very exciting times. Yeah, I think I found myself uh, getting into the queue. I want that Polestar 5. I saw that thing yesterday. My heart fluttered. And I'm a gearhead, so anybody out there that knows me knows I, I like the toys. So you may be seeing me driving around Austin, Texas in one of those. Maybe you can help me get at, get, get on no, that list. So welcome. Uh, I would personally I go for the Roadster with the Cabriolet. That would be even uh, cooler uh, as an EV. I was kind of thinking more as the analyst demo unit program. So uh, You know, it, it never hurts to ask. Uh, that's worked for laptops, phones, and all kinds of other things. I'm not sure about cars. So, let's, so, so Dennis, give us a start out. Like We're here beginning of 2023. Um, clearly, the automotive space is where the energy is at here at CES, but kind of what are you predicting? What are you seeing ahead in automotive in this next year? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, ele electrification, of course, and the uh, rapid uh, acceleration of infrastructure is very important. But, you know, the, the good part is that there is no debate regarding the future of automotive. It is electric, and it's coming from all brands. So now you, it's not enough to be electric. Now you need to be a really good quality, uh, performance-oriented car. That's where you need to be attractive. And that's what I think the competition will uh, we look into right now. So from a priority basis, you know, you are the chief operating officer. So kind of most everything stops with you and getting it done. So uh, what are your priorities for 2023? Uh, that's a good question. So we, in the last 18 months, went from 10 markets to 27. That is one feature. We went from 29,000 cars in 2021 to uh, more than 50,000 last year. We have produced more than 100,000 cars. So we geared up and we scaled the company last year. This year is about execution. To get the execution done and to be prepared for having multiple cars in our showrooms. That's what we see right now. It's post of three and post of four. Yeah, the process of ramp is a really challenging one, Dennis. It's not easy to get from 25 to 50 to 100,000. You know, there's a certain EV maker that there's a lot of coverage in the in the business press about all the, the stress of, of growing. But at the same time, with all the demand you have, you know, like I said, I've asked around about getting my hands on a car. It's like, hey, maybe we could help you get on a list. It's like, that's because people want what you're building. And that's really exciting. But of course, you got to find that you got to meet that uh, demand. You got to keep building and building and building. By the way, they need more semiconductors because that's uh, that's pretty important too, right, Dennis? Yeah, you're totally right. But what you see is a strong demand from customers. I think that's where it starts. But we also decided to bring all the customer service and the customer care in-house because we really appreciate the direct dialogue with the customers. We think that that is really important to get the feedback. What do they experience with the car? What do they experience and, and expect from a premium brand? And that's what we really enjoy to have that dialogue going. Yeah, it's very exciting. So tell us all, this is your moment. What are you announcing here at CES 2023? 
Uh, first off, just you know, 50 meters from here, here we have the new Polestar 3, first time on American soil. So I think that is the uh, main message. The second message is that we have a small technology nugget that we are showcasing, and that is the uh, artificial intelligence provided by SmartEye. So two driver monitoring cameras that we then can, uh, you know, showcase how you uh, check the driver's state and act upon that in the car. So that we're doing. And then today we also released that we are together with Google delivering HD high definition maps to the cars. And on top of that, we're also providing, uh, you know, that you can through the phone start the climate system in the Postal 2 through the Google system. So finally, you see this integration with the phone and the car that many has been talking about. We can showcase that now. Yeah, it's funny. I think for years, uh, I would say maybe 10 years ago, when people first started talking about the melding of technology, really big technology with automotive, you saw a lot of eye rolls, right? Oh, that's for the young people or that's for, but we clearly are in a different place right now. And I think your timing is perfect, right? And it really is that delicate balance of the best technology, uh, of course, EV, uh, but safety is is paramount. And I know you spent a few years at Volvo uh, as well. Uh, at, but at, at Polestar, safety is also very important. And here we are in the Luminar booth. So can you talk a little bit about the partnership that uh, you have with them? What are you doing with them? No, that's good. And we believe in a collaborative effort. So we're always teaming up with the best. And when it comes to LIDARs, that is what we're doing together with Luminar. So we identified Luminar as the best partner for us years ago. Now that industrialization is coming into play. So we, uh, we will in a uh, yeah, quite short period of time open up the Postal 3 so you can order that with a LiDAR on top. And what that brings to the car and the safety is paramount. I mean, you get the distance, you get the active lasers and the light emitted from the car. And, uh, you know, that is, that is really important for us. And it's not only improving the safety, but also bringing the, the convenience and comfort. So we are about to launch the unsupervised driving, the autonomous driving uh, in California, actually, by the end of next year, available for customers. And that is enabled by Luminar. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, it's I'm finding it difficult to imagine how people do, let's call it an 8S2+, a, a, a two, 8S2 plus yeah. and above without LiDAR. So... Um, your, I don't know if you want to call it courage or foresight or intelligence to, to use this is, is impressive. And also there were so many naysayers that said, hey, cost can't come down. It's going to be ugly. Uh, you know, it's going to look like a big police siren or an ambulance siren forever. But the way you've integrated on, on, on your cars is, is really nice. I mean, you, bear, you know it's there, but it's classy and, it, and it's clean. And that is not easy, is it? No, that is really a, I mean, it's a new component that you bring into the car and in a rather visible state. You need to place it high up so you can get this distance. But we believe that together with Luminar, we are, we are making that happen. And we also convinced that you need the cameras, radars and LiDAR to be able to reach the redundancy and, you know, to be able to operate unsupervised. Yeah, the commonality uh, between you guys, uh, what Austin said yesterday on the stage about a million lives, the technology is there and it's becoming increasingly affordable. And you start to even wonder about like the social responsibility of companies to utilize technology that you know can save lives right now. And I think that's going to start to accelerate it. You know, I know capitalism wins, but if you can spend a little bit and save a lot of lives, it's kind of like, you know, doing these things in the process, uh, the map thing. You know, I said offline, uh, we're just going to build a autonomy and safety um, neural network for the world by having vehicles that are just out there on the road doing what they're doing every day. So every Pulsar that's out there that's pr providing data back with these civil maps is going to create a much safer driving experience plus the LiDAR you're putting in your cars. No, totally. I 100% uh, agree with you. To get that data, data feedback loop from the car and improve the neural networks, I mean, that is what you, what you need on the longer term. And we are taking that decision to go with Luminar strongly. So with that, what is Polestar's sort of perspective on the future of autonomy? We have focused, we have let other companies focus on the robot taxi. We think that other, other companies can do that better. So what we focus on is where a private driver can get the most use of it. 
And for us, that is on a highway when you're commuting to work. So kind of boring driving when you probably would like to do something else, like reading or preparing for the next meeting or just relaxing. That's what we're focusing on. So that's also why we are focusing on, on the LiDAR, because you need these 250 meters of a distance so you can actually utilize a bit higher speed driving as you do on the highway. So that's what we have been focusing on and tailoring the entire, entire sensor set on the car towards that. So essentially, is this L3? Would you characterize this as level three or level four? I mean, uh, we probably avoid the different uh, levels, but level four probably. So unsupervised where, the, where we are actually responsible for driving the car and not the, uh, the owner or the driver. That's exciting, and, and I can't help but to think about the societal changes that this will enable. I mean, one of the reasons you want in your next generation car, uh, it's got to look great inside because it becomes an extension of your living room, uh, of your office, uh, where you're consuming entertainment, you're, you're communicating. Uh, this, you have a steering wheel in front of you, but it, it, it time shifts, and I can't help but to think... Uh, what are we going to do with all this time that the drivers had? And are we going to live further outside of our cities to be able to enable this? Because, you know, driving is not necessarily a chore anymore. It's a lot safer. Yeah. No, you're right. And this is changing the society. This technology that we now bring forward is changing society. Where you used to live, how the cities is actually built. All that is changing with this technology. And that is so cool to be part of that. It looks a little bit like uh, you add this with urban air mobility and all of a sudden, you know, we, we find all new parts of the world that people can live in and participate. You add in what we're doing with collaboration and, you know, of course, we still need people in the factories, but even autonomy there will make more vehicles built with less hands over time and we're seeing it all happen. But again, you know, getting it safe, making it, you know, a luxurious and exciting experience for people because there is that, you know, that affinity that people have for their vehicles. Yeah. And, you know, that is the, I think the biggest conflict towards really autonomy is that people still love to drive and people yeah. still have a love affair with their cars. And you guys are building cars that are really exciting. And congratulations on that, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you very much. And also just one more note. Uh, when you're also relaxing in the car or charging in the car, we also released uh, recently that the gaming will now be part of the uh, displays in the car. So NVIDIA has released a cloud computing or cloud gaming uh, platform also through the Postal 2s. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, we Google in the car, NVIDIA in the car. I said, we're tech analysts, and we just got dragged into this automotive stuff. But you got semis, you got, you know, so much going on. Dennis, congrats on a great CES 2023. Excited to see these pole stars on Thank the you. road uh, with Luminar technology inside of them. Thank you very much. I appreciate the dialogue. All right, everyone's tuning in here at CES 2023. I'm Daniel Newman here with Patrick Moorhead for the 6.5 on the road. There'll be more conversations, so hit that subscribe button. Watch all the shows here on the floor and all our other interviews that we do year-round with some of the most exciting tech executives in the world. For this one, got to go. See you all later. Bye-bye now.